Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and in years past we've had all kinds of 4K displays, right? 4K TVs, 4K monitors, 4K laptops, and even a 4K smartphone. And then we also got tons of 4K cameras to put video and content on those 4K screens. So 4K mirrorless cameras, DSLRs, and even the ones in our pockets are shooting 4K. There's even 4K webcams now. So you can do Skypes or FaceTimes in glorious high definition if you wanted to, that option's there. So it kind of seems like pretty much everyone's making some sort of consumer 4K camera, except Canon. So in last year's State of 4K video, we came to the conclusion that pretty much everything is better in 4K. And that's still true, but now that it's 2017, it's kind of time to take a look at the bleeding edge getting pushed a little further out and we can see what's uh, beyond 4K. So first of all, what is a K? I know most of you know, but for the sake of simplicity, it represents about a thousand horizontal pixels. So 1920 by 1080 is about 2000 pixels wide, so we can call it 2K. 4K is 3840 by 2160, so again, about 4,000 pixels wide, so we call it 4K. So okay, you may have seen my recent video about the LG 5K display. This is a monitor with a resolution more than 4,000 pixels wide. It's a 5120 by 2880 panel. So 5K, which is actually a tessellation of four times 2560 by 1440. And it works great. A single Thunderbolt 3 cable can push that video resolution. You get a native 4K window with room around it to spare. It's an awesome setup. So 5K exists, and that's great. Beyond that, we don't really have that many 6K or 7K resolution monitors. That's just sort of a weird resolution for 16 by nine. So that brings us right to 8K. So 8K is four times 4K. So 7680 by 4320. There are some 8K screens out there in the world. Wikipedia has a little list of pretty much every single 8K display ever announced and there's about a dozen of them right now. But we did see a couple of these 8K TVs at CES again this year, and that's kind of the most frequent place you'll see them. You don't really see them in people's houses. You see them at places like CES and trade shows and demo areas. But broadcast television isn't really 8K. It's barely ever even 4K. And I'm gonna say there's a grand total of probably less than 100 8K videos on all of YouTube, including this one. So what's the deal? What are they even showing on these 8K TVs on the demo areas? Well, a lot of slideshows. 8K is a huge resolution, not just for videos, but even for photos. 8K is 33 megapixels. So to fill an 8K TV pixel for pixel, you'd need a 33 megapixel photo. So the easiest way to just play demo material at the 8K TV you're showing at CES is just to play a slideshow of really high-res photos. And if you're lucky, maybe even a time-lapse of really high-res photos. And that's the biggest difference between high-tech and the bleeding edge of tech. For all those high-tech 4K displays, we do have a whole bunch of high-tech 4K cameras to capture video to be shown on them, and that's awesome. But for all the bleeding edge 8K TVs we have out there, the couple that exist, there are almost no video cameras out there ready to shoot 8K video. RED is an example of a company that's been pioneering high resolution image capture for the past couple of years. They were really early to 4K, and at this point they have two different video sensors that shoot 8K in production right now, including the one that's in this camera that we're shooting this on, which is why there's not just an HD option and a 1440p option and a 4K option, but also, if you're in Chrome anyway, an 8K option on this video. I'm guessing you probably can't watch this video in full 8K, even if you did have an 8K display and you did have the internet connection to be able to download all of this, you'd also need a GPU to be able to handle playing back that video, which it probably doesn't at this point. So if you tried to click that 8K button, I'm sorry about your GPU. But people can still choose to shoot videos in 8K now for the same reason that they chose to shoot 4K when everyone only had 1080p, for better sharpness and better reframing ability, more data points for better stabilization, a lot of minor stuff like that. But again, that's why it's all at the very high end. So here's what to keep in mind. Basically, all the stuff is still bleeding edge. Most people don't have a 4K TV yet, but I would argue that it's gotten to the point where if you're buying a 4K TV now, it should be 4K. It's just that people usually just don't buy TVs unless they need a new one, and most people's 1080p TVs are working just fine. The cycle for people upgrading their TVs is much, much slower than maybe a smartphone, for example, where you get a new contract every two years. So basically we're at this merging point in 2017 where if you go to like a Best Buy, or if you look on Amazon, or basically any electronic store, then 4K is mainstream. It's everywhere, it's ready to go. But if you go through people's apartments and people's living rooms and look at their TVs, you'll find that that's a lot less common. There's still plenty of 1080p TVs. So that's where we're at, and that is the state of 4K. Thanks for watching. 
Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.